we have Rob Sylvester. I've um, probably seen him in the Casuals documentary. Well known, Pompey. Well known. Um, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Thanks, yeah. Bit, bit fed up with this lockdown stuff, do you know what I mean? Keep drinking indoors every weekend. Um, yeah, uh, it's not everybody. the same, is it? <laughs> no, no, rules are rules, isn't they? And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's not the same. Um, it. So, your book, Rolling with the 657 Crew. Yes. Um, why did you decide to write it? Um, it well, it was more Cass, a meeting with Cass on a film set. Um, it was Dave Courtney's film, Hell to Pay, that a lot of it was filmed down here in the uh, uh, scrapyard as you went to Portsmouth. Oh, yeah, I've heard uh, of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, a chance to meet him with him and I had a good chat of it. Well, not a chance to meet him, but a meeting with him. And he said, well, I'll be interested in it because he'd, he'd already done a couple by then, his, his own one. And uh, congratulations, you've met the ICF. And I think he was on his third or fourth one. But um, I, th you know, I thought about it and he said, you know, this, you know, so we got to do is go out and interview it, interview a few people, get their stories of certain events and, you know, sort of give it a go. I ripped down the 10 chapters, forwarded them on to John Blake's publishing and they they gave me the go ahead. So uh, they were, were interested. So basically that's how Right. Um, we was having a, um, a little chat before. Um, and you've had a problem with royalties, haven't you? Um, yeah, I've, I've changed my bank details uh, five years ago. I, I, you know, emailed the royalties department at John Blake's, but, um, you know, for what it's worth, I mean, it, it, it's, it was sort of paid yearly. And um, I know, haven't had anything for five years, so I chased, um, had a chat with Cass, and he said, well, yeah, get on to him. And, but I didn't, unbeknown to me, it's not John Blake's publishing anymore. It's, but Bonnie Air or Bonnie Air books. So oh, um, it's changed hands, has it? Yeah, well, there, there's just been a, probably a, you know, I've been deleted or something or whatever. I, I don't know, but anyway, I've, I've emailed him tonight and uh, fingers crossed it should be saying by Tuesday. So I've got yeah. five years to come, yeah. But so, it's been, it's, yeah, it's, go know, on. Put hardback, paperback, um, translated into Italian. So, you know, there is royalties coming in, you know, it's slowly selling, but the book game is a very slow business anyway, you know, not many people go out and buy books, you know, and and the only one that was um, outselling mine at one time was Harry Potter. Oh, really? <laughs> that, yeah. Uh, well, if you're going to get outsold by any any book, then, no. then Harry yeah. Potter's like, yeah. I mean, oh. it, that, that went a little bit crazy. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So can can you remember your first match? Just not 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 as a casual, but can you just remember when you first went to Pompey? Well, first game, I was actually born in I was born in North London, and um, the first games I went to were Tottenham games. My dad used to take me because that was his team. And um, okay, yeah, at a very early age, you know, okay, I moved down there when I was six, and it wasn't until about I was probably about eight or ten. Do you know what I mean? Because money was tight, and you know there wasn't sort of money, for, you know. At that age, for me to go to football, even though you know, no, no, of course but, not. Yeah, I started going. You know, they, they was was the local team. Um, a few mates from school, and I think like everyone else, you know, you you um you go as they're your team. You go and support them. Um, the older you get, you sort of do get involved with the the aggro that can happen at games. And you know, or would you want to be? You know, then then those it was like the threatening end. You know, would you a singer or was you a fighter? Do you know what I mean? And I think it's a, as you get older, you sort of get out of the threatening end and you start moving about the ground. You know, like looking for or looking at the away fans and what they're up to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when, how old was you when that started happening then? Um, probably about 15, 16, I suppose. So that would have been about nineteen eighty. Um, you know, the, 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 as well, there was the skinhead scene at the time. If I was turned up. Yeah. Like, you know, with the crombies and uh, tonics and yeah, think, uh, shrink to fit Levi's. You know, that's saying it was a sort of a mod culture as well. You know, kicking in the quadrophenia was out. Um, if I was sitting in the bath with the new jeans on, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it was sort of sort of progressed from there. And uh, you know, the, again, the older you get, the more involved you get. And you know, like after your first bit, you know, it's sort of like can be addictive. You know, and you, it's easy to fall into the trap of turning up at places you shouldn't be and um you know having trouble getting involved in things you shouldn't be getting involved in 
yeah, looking back on it, yeah, but it was. But probably... that's what happens, you know. It, it it happens in every town and city up and down the country on a Saturday night. Well, you know? yeah, yeah, but you the... know, it's just it was a different background, a different setting. It 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 wasn't nightclubs and pubs. No, no. I mean, th- th- I've always said that. I've said it on telly before. I mean, uh, a football hooligan isn't predatory, you know, like uh, sexual uh, perverts and uh, paedophiles and burglars and drug dealers. You know, they're, they're predatory. They're permanently looking to, you know, break the law. A football hooligan was, you know, a bit how it was portrayed in the firm, the first one with Gary Oldman, that, you know, he was yeah. in the state. He, he got himself at it at the weekend, but basically that's what it was. You know, football hooligan in the old kickoff times was probably a hooligan between one o'clock on the Saturday till six o'clock, and that was it. Went home and like, you know, whether he had or had, had a grow or didn't, you know, it wasn't like, well, I'm not going again, or it's you know, it's like, yeah, cool stuff. So but, you've just you've just mentioned Gary Oldman, and that, that this was going to be a later question, but I mean, I'll ask it now because it's it's a good intro to it. Football films, do you do you rate them or not? No, not really, because they, they must be so hard to do. I mean, when you look at some of the things in um, uh, the football factory, you know, with the young kids who broke into the geezer's house and used the phone. Yeah. And it's, but it must be so hard to do, do you know what I mean? And, but it's funny, because when you look back at that, I thought, I, th- I think it was ID. When I look back at that, I thought, that is probably like the best one, because it, is that, is, oh, if it's yeah. where they infiltrate them. Um, you know, if, you, if they stuck to a story like that, it, it comes becomes more re- realistic. But you know, with you know, we was involved with the second firm as well. You know, we supplied you know all, all our sons and that made up the, the crowds for the Pompey when they played West Ham when they met in the fairgrounds. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, with the yeah, with the dogs. Yeah, good. Yeah, thing. yeah. A friend of mine yeah. lost his finger as well. The end of his finger. Bloody you know, hell. These dogs didn't know we were acting and bit the end of his finger off. <laughs> he got compensation for it, but um, just called him Kit Kat. You oh know. dear, the dogs didn't know we were acting. That's funny. No, there's real, uh, real police and real police. Well, real police dogs. They're police dogs. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So they um, yeah, they had, the, had the end of his little finger off. Yeah. yeah. So did you have quite a lot apart from that? Did you have any? Did you have quite a lot to do with the second firm? Because. I think unfairly the the second firm got slated a little bit, and 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 I think that's quite unfair because they got the clobber right. But I mean, the original firm with Gary Oldman, as you just mentioned, is iconic. Yeah, and I think that's why it got slated because they shouldn't have really touched it; they should have left it alone. But, yeah, um, yeah. Again, you know. Uh, and this is what I was going to mention later on. Not everybody could could afford the feeler tracksuits. Not everyone was a casual that went to football, even though they were involved with the violent side of it. You know, we were coming out of the punk uh, skinhead mod era, sort of yeah. like 83, you know, then everyone sort of changed it, but, you know, into, into the casual era, you know, which, and then again, not everyone could afford it. Not, you know, the average wage bills could have been between one and 200 pounds a week, you know, like 80, 81, 82. I think a pair of trainers was 30 quid, do you know what I mean? And it's probably yeah. the same thing as I remember, that. Yeah, I mean, I remember being at school and asking mum to get me trainers because if you didn't have the right trainers at school, you were no one. Yeah, yeah. it's right. It's, it's yeah. horrible. You know, yeah. If you had to wear shoe fair zone trainers, you would, you would yeah. know. You know yeah, it's it? not. No, not no, enough. It's hard. So you just said, so am I right in saying <clears> you, you first started seeing Pompey dressing in around 83. About that, yeah, yeah. There was a letter, um, one of the boys sent a letter to, do you remember the Face magazine saying that um, you'll be seeing yeah. a lot more Pompey, you know, and, and, and signed it off the Super Bowl 7 crew. So that was the uh, sort of beginnings of that. Yeah, I mean, I've spoke to, uh, I've spoke to Jake Payne and um, he, he sent me, um, two zip folders uh, of Pompey photos and I use them on my Facebook page and they always get a lot of likes. Um, yeah. Pompey, am I right in saying Pompey were the, uh, were the most photoed or is that the right way to put it? Um, they well, have the most photos taken of them. 
Yeah. Look, well, look on social media, it looks like that, doesn't it? But it was only, you know, by themselves, you know. Um, yeah, of course. Then it, yeah, Facebook didn't, you know, wasn't, it didn't, you know, want, if, um, what's the word? Wasn't it invented back then, was it? Of course not. No, exactly, no. So, um, you know, I wrote this to people somewhere, unbeknown to them, probably holding some really good photos that, you know, that, you know, uh, sort of, you know, can put to bed the myth of who, what, who, what, what, when, you know what I mean? I know Pompey was out and about and, you know, like well dressed up by easy 82, 83. Um, but, you know, somebody somewhere has probably got a lot, of, a lot of photos unbeknown to him that, you know, could, you know, shed some more light on things. But there's enough of Pompey. And when, yeah. and when you see Pompey, it's not, you know, it was like, as long as you had jeans, trainers, and a diamond jumper, you know, it didn't have to be a Pringle diamond jumper. It didn't have to be lowest jeans, you know. And it, but as long as the, the trainers were sort of there, you know, you know, when you're in a mob of you, you know, like, again, not everyone could afford that gear. And um, as well, you didn't want to get it ruined either. You know, you could pay 150 quid for a money jumper, and first day out it gets ripped or whatever. You know what I mean? So uh, Jake told me um, a tale of Eddie Crispin's jumper. Get it when the when the police threw the. Dog in uh, the back of the van. Were you in? Yeah. Were you in that van? No, no, that that, that was the Eastley lot. Um, we we were stamp sure. Um, but right. I'm not sure what game it was, but um, yeah, I met him up. I met up with Eddie over. Uh, it was New Year's Eve actually, because this, there was a room about someone wanted to do a film on the six five seven, and we had to meet up with the geezer. But it turned out like a um, bit of a hoax. Do you know what I mean? He didn't have the didn't have any money in place. Didn't have any camera, any anything in place to do anything. No, right, okay. Uh, the mad brainwave and thought you know we're going to pay for it ourselves or whatever but yeah yeah that, yeah it's just yeah um a time waster yeah exactly that exactly yeah, yeah. by just you know um so you were talking about you getting involved in things you shouldn't um and you you look back on things with with retrospect yeah i mean we, we, sorry we, we, we were part of a mob and, uh, you know, it was a case of looking after each other as well. You know, we were going to some like, unsavoury places, you know, like going to Cardiff, going through, <laughs> getting that 657 and getting off at Waterloo, getting through London and going up north, you know, and you'd, you'd already had it. You could have had it a couple of times already, you know, through going through London and again, coming home, you know, it wasn't just having going and playing the team you played. You, you were meeting up with, yeah. Yeah, all sorts of people, you know, some bigger firms, some little firms, you know what I mean? It was like, you know, it was like full on. Um, yeah, but it was yeah, horses for courses sort of thing, you know, you could come against someone, you you know, you could chase someone out, out, out of station, but you could be on the receiving end of it, you know. You could, it's actually been, we were coming home and the, the, whoever, I think it was some, they were going home, we were going home at Donk, not Donkster, somewhere, I don't know, up north somewhere. And literally, they, they was on one train, we was on the other, do you know what I mean? But obviously couldn't get at each other, do you know what I mean? It's just like a lot of piss taking and... Shouting and stuff. Yeah, yeah, nothing yeah. you could do. But then, as, as, yeah. when the train windows opened as well, you could just slide <laughs> yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I just interviewed Gary Boatsy Clark, and he said that... Um, and this is the reason why I do this as well, is that the scene wasn't just about violence. The mainstream media would have you believe that. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. But it wasn't just, it was about being with your mates. And like you said, you went to some unsavoury places, so you had each other's backs. That yes. was, you know, it's yeah. the camaraderie, if anything, isn't yeah. it? That's well, we were football fans, you know, we were going for the football with them and said, bro, you might get involved with that aggro, but... People should say we should turn up just for the violence. We didn't. That, you, that's, annoys, but, that annoys me. Yeah. Yeah. We were football fans, and you would, you know, you wouldn't be going if you weren't. Do you know what I mean? All oh, right, there was some people who tagged onto it, but not. They wouldn't have gone to as many games as what you know certain other people did. You know, yeah. so, you know one or two. Big when games I when I interviewed Martin King of Chelsea, he yeah. said that the way to answer that question, oh, you're just football folks. You're not bothered about the football. You're not bothered about the score. Yeah. Well, most of those people that you're accusing will be season ticket holders. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, especially in the Premier League now, you know, with with Chelsea, you know, like um, you know, it's impossible to get a ticket unless you are a season ticket holder, and some of them are on waiting list as well. So, yeah, you know, it's it's what, yeah. Do you um, do you think um, it was no, it was no doubt it was a working class sport. Do you think? It's 
we're getting outpriced. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't really watch football anymore, apart from South Man, I do a lot with Rangers. Um, but, you know, I have watch them and see how they're getting on. But I watched the England game the other day, and I swear my life, I didn't know five of the players. I wouldn't have. Now, years ago, you would have named everyone, how many caps, what his club yeah. played for. Honestly, I didn't know four or five of the players. I didn't. Not through interest, it just seems it's. It's just like it's just like a business now, isn't it? It's not, you know, you know, to play for England. I see one of the players, what at the death, rolling about, and I thought you play for your country at Wembley, you know what? Well, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah I, just, I don't, I don't know what it is, you know. It's you know, people would kill for that opportunity, wouldn't they? Yes, yes. I mean, we laugh, but one, one World Cup or something, they said we didn't have any left backs. Well, I thought you could go and get someone off the street, so yeah. Oh. Give us, we give you five hundred. We play for England at left back tomorrow. Yeah. You, it runs out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, the thing, the thing with modern football and, and this VAR thing, that yes. you can be off, your, your finger or your lace can be yeah. offside. Yeah. It's getting it's getting silly. Yeah. You know, because I think that the, the referee's decisions, good or bad, that's part of the game. Or it yeah. used to be. That's, yeah, yeah. VAR well, is too that, clinical. That VAR should only be used... If the ball's crossed the line, as in a goal, and someone right, can, you said that. Yeah. can play, they have to stop the game anyway. So, but it's yeah. like a changing. It's um, I don't know. Yeah, it needs. I, I don't know. It's just the, the people I interview that they they seem to be where you are. They seem to be disillusioned with the game. They don't, you know, they don't recognise it anymore. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm glad I lived through what I did. You know, I can remember the goalie. You could pass back to the goalie because I played a bit of football myself, and uh, you know you could pass pass the ball back to the goalie, and he was only allowed four or six steps or whatever it was. And mm-hmm. so the game of the day, they're, they're taking goal kicks; they don't even have to go out the area. And you know, again, it's my own fault for not keeping up with what's going on. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't be a very yeah, good yeah, I suppose. But I mean, if it's not, if you don't, if you feel disillusioned and you don't feel part of something, you're not going to keep up with it, are you? You know, no. You're not, I mean, you, you're it's, not less interested, more and more. Right, you do other things. There's enough uh, football on television now, so you don't have to watch a whole game. You know, you can watch the best bits, or you watch the goals, or even watch the preview of the season, where they're up to at the minute. You know, it's like. Yeah. Um, not- I, I, I did see um, that um, Pretty Patel, or what, whatever, whatever her name is. She's asked for all the people on the hooligans list for the passports to be handed in for the Euros. Yeah. I mean, to me, I think, how long can you ban people? You know, yeah. it's getting... Sentences, don't get me wrong, the sentences that, that, are, that are getting dished out uh, compared to the people downloading pornography or paedophiles downloading certain types of... Um, Completely, mate. Yeah, it, it's, it, they're not even going to prison. Do you know what I mean? But you go, you break the law, you, and you get caught having trouble at football. You are going to prison. A lot of Pompey boys got jailed for two years for the Southampton game and and the Plymouth game before that, getting two years. Do you know what I mean? What? And all prison does, all prison does, is produce a hundred thousand heroin addicts every year. Do you know what I mean? I don't think they realise what they're doing to people. You know? And no, they, well, they don't care. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I don't. Numbers game. I, yeah, yeah, I've, well, yeah. It, um, I think it always has been. I think it always has been wrong. Um, so, what's 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 the future for you then, Rob? What's um, what's happening with you? Any more books in the line, or I've, I've helped out on a few books. As I've helped out, I've been in a few films, only extra bits and that. You know, Cass's film, um, helping out the firm. We were in. Uh, uh, what was it? Green Street doing all the fight scenes and oh, I've been to you, but, buggy. yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, at the minute now. I just sort of anyone needs a hand doing but I've, a couple of old boys down here have been doing autobiographies, autobiographies. Sorry, yeah. I've helped them do the ten chapters of and how easy it is to go through it and write a chapter on or a paragraph on each chapter and then put it into the publishers and and you'll see if you get a deal or not, but. You know, not well. I say it's only been a couple, but they have got the deal. So, you know, once you've written a book, you know, you can start producing. You know, a bit like music. You know, once you've had your yeah top ten hit, you know, you know how it works and how 
how to go about it and the best way to go about it because you know you can't just write a book you know my, my one took out just over a year right but um yeah there's a lot to it you know it's quite it's quite an interesting thing when you find out you know when you um you've just said you you help out on um other books yeah does that come easy to you now or easier because like, you've already done it and because because i've written a book I know how you can do it, or how, how to go about it, you know, and it's all about using that words. I think on my book, you had to do 120,000 words and they edit it down to 80,000. You know, look at the in normal sentence used about 25, 30 words. You know, I think a bit of A4 paper front and back is nearly 3,000. So, you know, it's, it's not that hard, but, um, you know, again, it's using up, you know, you didn't just go to the pub, you went to the pub that so-and-so drinks in and the landlord so-and-so, you know, don't just, say you know and i found this out later on you know you, i went to the football with my mates we had a fight come home no we met the pub <laughs> no of course not no so there's you, much more to it yeah let's say you got to sort of use that word use up the words so if you're using 120,000 words and you can then when they edit it out you know you can take out all the yans and mm, i don't know you know all them sort of things yeah there. of course yeah yeah you know when i you know i i, I do a little bit of editing and um yeah. You know for this so but it's not anywhere near the sort of level that you are and the way you talk about it you can tell you know your stuff um it, yeah, it, but it's just simple as that i tell people that i've been there done it read better than book about it so i do know do you know what i mean and you know I, you know i'm not saying i'm an authority because there's people know more than me or been about long with me or not still involved as much yeah. but you know been, i've never been to an england game so you know again I'm, an england away game sorry so I don't know about that part of it, but you know, I'll leave that to the other experts. And what's good when other book launches have been to, like Stoke, and we've been uh, a few over the years. You know, we're all sitting around the table laughing. You know, no, like, um, oh, that's not true. You never done that. All that bullshit. Do you know what I mean? It's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've done it. Do you know I mean, you know, like, the thought we, you know, we're, we're, we're all authors now. Do you know what I mean? Look at us. Yeah. I do carry weight as well because I did something for the Observer. Um, yeah. One of the chief uh, top writers for the Observer and the Sunday Observer um, did a bit for him, and he, he, he was interested in the Brexit and thing. Trying to, um, and yet the, the chief editor from Le Monde, and I ended oh. up taking it down, and then I loved it. Do you know what I mean? And he's like sixty-five, yeah. yeah, been everywhere. War, they've got war stories and all sorts, and um, they love how how real life it is, you know. And yeah, you know, we do. We're not just the people off the street, but we're the people off the street that people talk about who don't realize how much knowledge we've got no yeah. you've got a lot of you know you have you have i mean you've got a lot of experience but you freely admit that you've never been to an england away game no it was, it, it was never for me you've got I mean, a lot of experience of going up to a, a northern town say oh let's yeah say you've been to doncaster or whatever you know you've got a lot of experience to go and it isn't like today and a way day back then was, it was naughty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I say, we, we, we weren't the best, but we've come unstuck against some little Lincoln and teams like that. But we've done some big teams, you know what I mean? You know, I'm not here to, to say, like, this is that, and we've done them and they've done us or whatever, I mean, but it's the general consensus of it all. It's like, it's on the day, you know, and, uh, and, and to be honest with you, that England thing never appealed to me. I didn't, I didn't. You know, I was Portsmouth. I didn't want to be mixed up with a load of other teams. You know, like you know, become a famous for for England. You know what I mean, I, I wanted to be famous with Portsmouth. I didn't. It just didn't appeal to me. And, and I always said, my identity is. I say I'm British. I'm not. Yeah. I am English, but I, I, I like the British thing. You know what I mean, like a good friend of mine in Scotland says, the trouble with the Englishman, he's lost his Britishness. Which, when you think about it, is true. You know what I mean? You know, the, the boys. You know, the. the we we didn't get to Great Britain and where we are without the help of the Welsh, Scots and Irish regiments, you know, that fought with us. And people no, seem to forget that. I think the jocks hate us. The, the Union Scottish men love us. Yeah. You know, it's only, but, you know, I'm not going to get all political now, but, um, that, you know, that's how it works. People got sort of remembered what your passport says, that you're British. Yeah. What's, what's that sign behind you, Rob? You want to try and swing oh, the camera around if you can? Yeah, that's the, my drone business. Okay, right. Um, I will put that link in the description. 
Hey, okay. if you just want to tell us a bit about it, that that that's fine. Um, well, I'm a roofer by trade, I suppose. If it is a trade, I don't know if you want to call it. But um, a good friend of mine, Jay, he's, he did his his pilot course for the drone. You know, he's got as much right to be up in the sky as a seven five seven or any other plane. You know, I know it's a small yeah. one, but he's still yeah. But we're trying to get into a bit of um, like roof surveys and building surveys. You need to put the drone up, a normal terraced house up over an extension, do it in 20 minutes without scaffolding and whatever. But again, the camera doesn't lie. So if you've got a leak on the roof, the customer can say, I want just that fixed. Or if the roof gets up there and says, you've got this, that or whatever, you know, the camera doesn't lie. So, you know, excuse the pun, I hope it takes off. But it's early days at the minute. Yeah. The web or the domain for www.izon.com, izondrones.com. So the next thing's a website, and um, if you get it out there a bit, and I'll put all this in in the description. Um, nice. And the eyes, um, and and the eyes on me, and the um, yeah, and the yahoo.com, and and yeah, yeah. I mean, oh. it's, I, I will put that in the description, but if, you know, if everyone can see it. Um, Okay, Rob, I'd I'd like to thank you for today, mate. Um, You're welcome. It's been very interesting. And what I will say is that um, I've interviewed quite a few people now. And for so-called thugs, you're all gentlemen. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just... You know, you're not getting any dough for this, you know. I yeah. mean, I, I reached out, I asked you and you either say yes or you say no. You know, yeah. nine times out of ten, people are saying yes, and they're very willing to do it. You know, yeah. it? and I really appreciate it. Um, it's um, so that, it's social yeah, history at the end of the day. It's social history at the end of the day. It's something that did happen. You know, whether the politicians like it or not, but it's one thing as well. They could ne they've never stopped it. This is exactly why I do it, Rob. Yeah, it's, that's you've hit the nail on the head. I don't want this history to be lost. You know, if, if someone said years ago, yeah, my dad was a model rocker or my uncle was, and you know, be quite glamorous, do you know what I mean? When you say, yeah, my dad was, then it's, oh my good God, oh my God, oh my God. you know, as if there's some called um, mad criminal, do you know what I mean? You know, that, um, yeah, and it, and make, you, say you've made, now, you know, you, you can take your own personal opinion of what you think and you've just said it, you know, yeah, yeah, it's as simple as that. Okay, so that was Rob Silverstar, um, author of rolling with the 657 crew um there will be more videos coming out from southern casual soon